lot of you guys might not know this, but I spend quite a bit of time driving for dollars. And one of the best places that I know to go looking for mobile homes that people probably don't even use anymore or might need somebody to sell is on these back roads. Not only does it give me a good peace of mind, but it's also profitable. I get a lot of questions from people asking where to find some of these affordable mobile homes that you guys have seen in my videos in the past. And I'm telling you right now, sometimes when I'm driving and I'll turn the corner and I swear to God, I'll find the investor's holy grail, the abandoned mobile home. So what do you do in a situation like this? I mean, you can't always get to the VIN number because lots of the times the VIN number is gonna be inside or it's gonna be on the frame of the home, but check out what I like to do. Whenever I find something like this, I like to locate the tag on the mobile home and then I'll place a call straight to the tax office. Revenue, this is Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Um, got a question. I'm trying to uh, look up a tag number for a mobile home that I'm trying to purchase from someone do you know if they own the land and the home or just the mobile home um i don't know um i know that i'm being offered the mobile home itself uh are they living in the home no ma'am okay what is the vin number um i don't have the vin number but i do have the tag number i'm just trying to verify ownership Detail number yes ma'am okay what's the decal okay it's going to be zero four 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 zero six as per the last decal that was on it is it red yes ma'am okay is it in mobile home park um it's on some i guess it's land owned by them but it's not in an actual park it's just like a few of them scattered out kind of like going towards cottonwood is it on willie varnum yes ma'am okay uh I have a 2895 Willie Varnum Road, Lot 8. Okay. That's owned by him with that decal number. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Would you give me that um, lot number one more time? Number 8. Okay, number 8 on Willie Varnum. And it's a single wide. Right. Um, 2,000 year model. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye. And just in case somehow, some way, you come across a mobile home that doesn't have a tag on it and you can make a call just like that, well, you can put a pin on the Google Maps and then you can go to your county GIS. That stands for Graphical Information System. And you can look up the actual land and bring up the landowner's information. And then from there, you can skip trace them. It's just as simple as this. Bingo. Just make sure that whatever website you land on, that it's a .gov and not one of these shady looking .coms. Now that I've got the name of the owner, all it takes for me is to go over to truepeoplesearch.com and conduct a quick search. So I'll type in the name of the person that I'm looking for, and after a little bit of fishing around, I can pretty much find out exactly who it is. TruePeopleSearch.com is a great way to skip trace one person at a time. It'll give you names, numbers, aliases, possible address. Then you can just go on ahead and contact that person to see if they want to play ball. Bingo! That wasn't that easy. And it really is just that simple. I know that I'm not the only person who's ever been in this situation before, and I know I'm not going to be the last. So take this information and do with it what you will, because it's going to help you out a lot when you're out there driving for dollars. I guarantee you you're going to be coming across a mobile home that you cannot identify who it belongs to and this is just a quick and simple way to do it the way that it works is is that each year when you have a mobile home you're going to have to get a decal on that mobile home it works kind of like your car right so you'll be able to call up the tax office or the tag office however it works in your state or your county whoever takes care of that in the area that you live in 
They will not give you the address of the person that you're asking for, but you can ask if there's any liens or anything like that on the property. The reason for that is because let's say for instance, you're out and you know, you out doing some shopping or something like that. You see a baddie in the store. Um, you go out and follow her out to the parking lot or something like that. You take a picture of her tag or something and you probably try to put it into a database and try to find out where she lives. And the next thing you know, we got a whole bag of problems and stuff on our hands. So that's why a lot of states don't do it. Some do. And the logic behind that is if somebody's in a hit and run, you can get that tag information and you can contact the authorities or something or find out who these people are. And then you can go on ahead and, I don't know, Take them to court, get your get back, whatever the case you want to be. So every state is not the same, but I guarantee you this decal method, tracking it down and also seeing if that home has some liens or anything like that on it before you purchase it from somebody does work out in your favor. You'll also want to do this just in case you are considering to buy a mobile home and you want to know a little bit more about the information and you want to do your due diligence because it's beyond just trusting people with your money. So with that being said, if you found something in this video that helped you out, and I really hope it did, please go on ahead and hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload videos and leave a comment for the algorithm because if I blessed you in this video, then help me spread my message to bless somebody else. If you want to know more about mobile home investing and you want to learn more of a hands-on approach instead of continuing to go to YouTube University just like a lot of other people do and watching all these boring seminars and boring webinars and two hours long where everybody's talking about how hard they had it and now they're a gajillionaire and you want to get your hands on some tools, you want to smell some sawdust and you want to be around a group of people who is just like you who want to invest in their futures using this platform, using the opportunity to invest in mobile homes. There's going to be a link below that you can fill out and I'll hop on a call with you and we can talk about FlipCon 2023. As a lot of you know, that last year I actually did a flipping workshop and I'm going to be inviting you guys back this year where we're going to flip a mobile home and I'm going to teach you everything that it is that I know about flipping mobile homes and making money in this space. Don't just take my word for it. Hear what some of the people who attended last year have to say. Hey, welcome to Alabama. What brought you here? FlipCon, learning about mobile homes. What got you interested in mobile homes? Uh, see, I've seen a YouTube and um, I wanted to learn some a different way of doing real estate, an easier way to do real estate. Yeah. Have you enjoyed yourself since you've been here? Absolutely. This has been one of the funnest, most knowledgeable things I've ever did as far as being at a conference. It's something you would never imagine. I used a paint gun all my life. We always had to fix shit, okay? So I've been using a roller and a brush since I was a child. I just repainted my bedroom again, like a, four or five months ago, using a roller and brushes. So look, let me tell you something, okay? $500 for a paint gun will change your life. <laughs> It'll change your life forever. And I got to use a, a what is it called? A wood saw. A wood great. saw. A circular saw? A circular saw. <laughs> and you ha And I handled it. You handled it and nicely. I handled it. Once I found out that this was a hands-on opportunity, that was what really sold it for me because a lot of the other stuff that I heard about was like, we'll tell you how to do this, we'll send you some paperwork, or we'll have a class where you come in, and we or we'll have a Zoom call and all that. It's like, I can't... There's so much information you can't get from just a conversation, you know, like, you got to get your hands dirty. It is such a natural, liberating feeling to get behind the tools, to feel the tools, be one with the tools and just know why you're doing it. You're, you're not, when you're doing it, you're not thinking about the money. You're thinking about helping someone and you're, you're thinking about the finished product. Like it's going to look so good when I'm done. It's helped me to not be so timid if it's a project that needs repairs. In my mind, I knew what I thought I would be okay with. Um, if it needed maybe some flooring or some painting, mm -hmm. I kept it there. But now if it were things on a grander scale that need to be repaired, I don't feel as intimidated by it as I did when I first got here. Get out there. Um, don't, don't let fear stop you. You gotta just give yourself that affirmation uh, 
uh, so you can go ahead and press forward in the things that you need to do. You know, I learned uh, how to run comps better. I learned how to uh, uh, market better. You know what I mean? So it's just a lot of things that I learned from that one experience. Of course, there's still some growth that needs to happen. But just with the knowledge that I've gained in these past few days, it's far greater than what I started with when I got here. It has been awesome. The hands-on experience is like no other. Because it's, I've never heard of anything like this happening, where you pay to go to training, but you're, the things that you're learning, you can really, really like apply it immediately. There's a lot of conferences that are happening. I've been to various different conferences, and there's knowledge out there. But to be able to learn hands-on skills, actually get out there on the job site, I, I, I don't know nothing like it. And that's going to do it for this week's video. If you're serious about becoming a flipper, then I really do hope that I will see you this August. Peace.